going with the uh, screws. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is a very brief introduction to threaded fasteners. Okay, and then we'll look at the stiffness of body joints. Okay, the next lecture we'll look at uh, the failure, uh, pr uh, you know, uh, criteria in terms of uh, body joints. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> threaded fasteners. Uh, we're looking at this. There are two categories. One is called bolts. The other called screw. Okay. Uh, very hard actually in terms of uh, differenti differentiating uh, the two. Sometimes the definition actually not uh, not uh, not not a clear cut between the two categories. But anyhow, uh, bolts we generally refer to designed to pass through holes in mating members and secured with nut from op opposite side opposite end. Okay. But for screw, it's designed to pass through a hole in one member to be joined into a threaded hole, okay, in the mating member. Okay, so that's general stick two. Okay. So what does that mean? Is basically, if I look at this diagram in here, okay. So according to our definition, which one would you think is a bolt? Which one would you think is a screw? The left side here is it's bolts, right? Yeah. <coughs> So <coughs> this generally we call it cap screws or screws, okay. Um, in terms of fasteners, okay, so either it has a tapered shank or non-tapered shank. So for tapered shank, uh, you probably will see uh, in cases like wood screw, sheet metal screw, concrete screw, or drywall screws, okay. And those are basically for ease of uh, driving into the material with the tapered shank. Well, uh, non-tipper shank, cap screws, bolts, you know, hex bolts, that eye bolts, those things. Okay. Yeah. For nut, you know, you you have a screw, then you need a nut for it. <coughs> and here's a few uh, categories of a nut. This is basically a top view, okay, or end view of the nut. And then the front view here. So this one here. So we call that. This is a regular. Uh, wash a uh, regular uh, sorry washer faced regular nut okay so you have a washer face over here oops so this 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 guy here okay so this little thing here that's the washer face okay <coughs> so this is the regular nut because the H shape here is regular <coughs> and this is also a regular nut but this is a <coughs> chamfered on the both ends okay and this one here these last two here are the two we call the jam nuts. Okay, so because the H is slightly smaller than this H right here. Okay, so this is a jam nut with a washer face, and this is a jam nut uh, with a, a chamfer on both ends right here. So what does what sham, what jam nut does basically? Uh, you use two nuts together. Okay, so one is the regular nut and the other is the jam nut. So when you have the uh, instead of basically uh, having the regular nut press very tightly with the uh, the member okay on the plate then you, it's t it's basically a place tightly with the jam nut so it doesn't basically get loose right yeah that's what jam nuts for uh, here's other couple of uh, other shapes in terms of nut uh, for example wing nut okay uh, castle uh, castle nut castle head nut and the self locking nut so castle head nut is uh, this there's a castle uh, type of uh, ending at it here, and then you have a quarter pin. So the screw uh, was uh, will be uh, initially drilled with a hole, and the quarter pin will go through the screw, okay, and also uh, go through this you know this gap right here, okay. So you basically preventing uh, the vibrations or loose okay of the nut from the screw. Self-locking nut is there's a little bit uh, uh, vinyl type of a material in it. Okay, so uh, when you uh, uh, scoot it on and uh, uh, apply a certain amount of friction, you know it doesn't get loose. Okay, yeah. Uh, washer is another thing that you will use together with the nut. Okay, this is a flat wa uh, flat washer. It's very uh, regular one here, and these ones that are here. Okay, these one are here. Uh, they are the ones that keep uh, give you certain amount of uh, friction and to prevent the loosening of the nut. So this is called lock nut, star, internal, external, okay, these kind of things. <coughs> okay, so then a couple of uh, uh, terminologies uh, related to threaded fastener, okay, yeah. So um, 
some of the very important you will need this okay in terms of calculation of the stiffness of the uh, of the screw. So H okay is called the head height okay H is the head height. Uh, just like the H for the uh, for the nut right the nut also has an H okay. Then you have this washer face. Okay. And this shank, okay, which is basically non-threaded area, okay, it's in using this small LD, okay, for its lens, okay. So LD, in our case, we refer to the shank or unthreaded area. The threaded portion, okay, is uh, indicated using L capital T, okay. Yeah. So those symbols you'll get used to it, okay. And total length is capital mm -hmm. L. Yeah, and many other things are uh, very similar to uh, the screw terminology, like a pH, you know, uh, major diameter, and other things. The same thing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's the uh, some of the terminology here. Okay. So the LT, remember what it is? It's the uh, threaded length. Okay. So basically, how much is it here? Uh, is using is calculated using these formulas for inch series. It's this. For metric series, it's this. Okay, so we'll apply these two formulas. Okay, and in one of the handouts, I'll give it to you. Uh, these formulas basically in the handouts. Right, um, that handout uh, is basically taken from the tables from the textbook. Uh, you can t you can use that. You can bring that to your um, to your final exam. Uh, it's a collection of the tables, so uh, makes things easier when you're looking up things. Okay, so that's LT. Okay, so this is how you calculate LT. All right. So now we use a a bolt, okay, or sc a screw for uh, joining members, right? Uh, this is a bolt joining members. So here, what members are we joining? We're joining one and two, and plus the washer. So those are the members we're joining here using uh, the bolt. So we have this so-called the grip, the L, for bolted joints. Okay. So basically, the bolt goes through all the way goes through the whole materials, the plates. So the grip essentially is the total length, okay, of all the members. That's the grip. Okay, so this is called L. But for a cap screw, okay, the grip is not the total length of the material anymore. The grip we call it the effective grip. Okay? Effective grip. So how do we calculate the effective grip? We have this formula over here for calculating the effective grip. Okay, so that formula is also in the table in the handouts, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me let me bring uh, open up the handout because I need to use that shortly. Uh, uh, nope, not in this one here. In the previous lecture, there's a lecture third, not twenty nine and thirteen tables. Okay. So over here. Okay. So this table here, right? Uh, this table is taken from a uh, ace edition, I believe. Okay, in the latest edition, this table is updated. Basically, the way to present those formulas updated. Okay, you can take a look at your. If you have a latest edition, you can take a look at it com to take a compare. Same formula though, huh? It's just uh, how the information is being presented. It's probably better actually in the latest edition. So if you want to use that one, that's fine. Okay. So that's grip. Okay. So just remember, there are two different grip. One is Easy, and the other effective grip. You have to use this formula. Okay. <coughs> uh, chances are, I will test is it's uh, it's this case study here because okay, uh, it's pretty typical. Okay. okay. So now what we're gonna deal with is the tension joints. Okay. So tension joints basically means uh, let's say for example this is a pressure vessel. And then you have an internal pressure. It's pushing uh, pushing out for this bolted joints here. So this is the tension joint we're looking at here. Okay? So this one is also tension joint. You have a two forces acting on the two sides and this bolted joint here is basically a tension joints. Okay? So that's what we're gonna look at. Okay. And we're gonna design to protect against the tensile failure for this tension uh, for this uh, uh, for this this uh, uh, bolted joints here. Okay. I'm missing a few here. Okay. So um, anyway, so let's now look at how the step by steps in terms of how do we uh, design for uh, the tension joints here. But the first step we need to know is this. Okay. 
So, first topic is we're looking at this for these tension joints is the stiffness okay, of fasteners and members. Okay. So in order to design for the tension joints, this is the first two piece information we need. What is the stiffness of the fastener? What's the stiffness of the member the fastener is clamping? Okay, so that's the two uh, information. So let's look at the stiffness of the fasteners first. So let's say this is the fastener. Okay, so this is basically the, the thing we're looking at here. Okay. So first, uh, stiffness. of the fasteners. Okay, so first let's talk about the stiffness concept. Okay, uh, if you recall in the per, uh, in your uh, mechanics of material, uh, this is a typical formula we used. Stress equal to F over A for a tensile test, and then you have the strain, which is defined as right the deflected length minus nominal. Okay, and then. then uh, the delta change over the nominal is a strain, right? So uh, at the same time, your uh, sigma equal to the Young's mole formula uh, times this uh, strain at here. So the three formulas together, you will have a delta equal to F naught L L naught over A E. Okay, so you will have this formula here. So delta is basically the deflection. F is the force, right? F is the force. So you can write this formula in terms of uh, F <coughs> equal to A E over L naught times delta. Okay, and that's basically the in the same format as F equal to K X, right? As a supreme, F equal to K X. X is the deflection. So apparently. Uh, for uh, for the stiffness we're looking at here is what the k will equal to a e over l naught, right? That's the stiffness. Okay, yeah. So this is the stiffness, and first we're looking at the stiffness the fastener. So then, uh, if I go back to my fastener over here, right? So if I look at the fastener here, this is the fastener we're using here. So the the fastener where the stiffness we're looking for is actually. Uh, contains two portions. Uh, first is uh, the portion which is the unthreaded portion, okay, the sitting within the clamped members. So basically between uh, from uh, from here to here, okay, from here to here, this is uh, one portion of the thread, right, uh, of the fastener, and we call this is LD, okay, that's the uh, on threaded portion, remember, right? The length of on threaded portion. And this portion over here, okay, this portion, okay, is the threaded portion. But this is not the total, remember the uh, the total threaded length is L capital T, right? We use L capital T. But we're only interested here is the total threaded portion that's sitting within the clamped member. So we use this, sorry, we use LT at here, okay? So L small t for that, uh, for that purpose, okay? Yeah. So uh, basically LD, okay, is uh, still the same as uh, the previous definition. So this is the unthreaded, okay? So LT is the uh, threaded portion, okay, in grip. Okay, within this grip here. Okay, not the total threaded portion. All right. So, so your uh, basically the stiffness of the fastener. Okay, is a connection of two pieces. One is this portion, and the other is this portion. Okay, so the stiffness of this portion, this portion, are different. The threaded and non-threaded is different. So it's like a basically you have two springs connected in series. All right. Yeah. So if I go back here now, I'm looking at the stiffness. So it's basically we're looking like uh, two uh, springs connected in series, okay? And this is one. Uh, let's say we call the KT, and this is the K sorry. Actually, we call this this KD at here, and KT at here, okay? So KD and a KT. So KD, okay, 
will be AD times E over LD according to this formula, right? And KT will be AT times E over LT. Okay, so that's the uh, stiffness. Okay. Okay, if I looking at the two formulas, so let's see what's known. E is the Young's formula for the material, it's the steel, so we know that. A T A D, what are they? They are the area, right? So basically they are the area. So if this if I looking at this this portion, so this is A D. And then for this the sh this portion here, that's A T. Okay? It's kind of hard to tell. Okay, it's A T. So AD is pretty obvious. The AD refer to it's the unthreaded portion. So that can be calculated basically using what? The major diameter of the scoop, right? The major diameter scoop. AT is the threaded uh, the area of the threaded portion. And that's actually, if you recall that, that's called the tensile stress area. One of the column, remember in the previous lecture, in the table 8 dash one and a dash two, it give us this so-called the the tensile stress area AT. Okay, it's actually based on calculation based on the average of this uh, minor diameter and the mean diameter. Okay, so the AT is calculated. So AD AT. Once you have the screw, you will be able to have these two quantities. Okay, so AT is kind of. Okay, so AD is the area, so you can calculate that uh, if you're using if you using the uh, um, the major diameter there, so you can calculate this one here. So that's the major diameter. Okay, and AT, if you recall that, that's the uh, between the mean diameter, the pitch diameter, and the minor diameter. Okay, over uh, this. Okay, and. The, you can get this one here from okay, table A-1 or A-2. depends on whether you're using a matrix, matrix uh, school or, uh, or UN type of uh, uh, American type of school. Okay? So the only unknown portion that we are looking, we're missing here is LD and LT, right? So if we can figure out LD and LT, then we can figure out the KD and the KT. So once we have the KD and the KP, K, K, KT, then we can calculate the total stiffness of the bolt. Okay? So KB is basically con uh, two two springs connecting in series. It's equivalent to two. Uh, resistors can connecting in parallel, right? So, so the total whole, uh, the the final result, okay, for this uh, stiffness of the board is this. You plug in all the numbers there, so you get A D A T times E over A D L T and plus A T L D. Okay, yeah. So that's the uh, stiffness for the board. So now let's look at this. How can we find the value of LD and the value for the LT? Okay. So remember what LD first just reinforced the idea. LD is the length of unthreaded portion within the grip. LT is the length of threaded portion in the grip. Okay. So that's the two lengths we're looking at. Okay. Yeah. So here is I'll use an example to go through. Uh, the process in terms of finding the stiffness, basically finding the value for LT and LD. Okay. Yeah. So just to emphasize, I test this absolutely 100% in the final exam. Okay. So you you know I said it clearly now. Um, if you don't uh, pay attention, that's up to you. Because if you the reason because uh, if you get one number wrong within this process, the whole, the rest of the calculation will be wrong. Okay, so that's so the nature of the calculation. That's why I, I want you to be careful, huh, in terms of uh, the steps and also in terms of reading the tables. Okay, so let's look at uh, uh, the, the this example here. So let's say suppose that I have 
uh, a bot trying to okay, clamp two members and plus a washer over here. Okay. Okay, so here is the bot over here. Okay. Then you have a nut at this end. Okay, so roughly like that. Okay. Yeah. And there are probably certain portion of uh, threaded portion over here. Okay, so uh, there are two members plus one washer. Okay, so what do we know? Uh, we know that for the two members, each the thickness of each is 14 millimeter. Okay. So the bot we're using, okay, it's uh, M14 time two. Okay, hex head bot. So this is uh, another crucial information that you have to to be able to uh, to read from here. So I'm not telling you uh, how do you read this, but you you know we, in the previous lecture we learned. So basically, what what information do we get out here, right? So here's the bot set here, and uh, so it has a washer, right? So and then then the washer is a 14R, okay? 14R R here means a regular, okay? So R here means regular. So we will look at uh, our table. It's a metric, so it's a 14R metric, okay? We'll look at the table, How? what information do we need based on this 14R reading? That's it, okay? So let's say uh, this is all the information we need, okay? So now we need to figure out uh, what is LD and what is LT? LT. Okay, what is LT? Okay, yeah. The whole thing that to get LDLT is basically it's everything is based on this table A-7, okay, which is the first table. Uh, is that first one? Yeah, which is the first one in the handout that they gave it to you? Okay, yeah. There, there might be a, 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 a I mean. Uh, th hopefully there's no change in table number, but um, in the latest edition, as I said, okay, there's a, s a better way of presenting it. Okay. So I'll use that table here to uh, uh, to go over the steps that are here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, what do we need to to come up with some information here? Okay. We we're gonna we're gonna need to use Appendix A-32 and A-33, okay, for this washer size. Okay, this is also given to you. That's the last page of the handout. Okay, A-32 and A-33 for the washer. Okay, yeah. So, uh, what do I? Why do I need to use that? Is because I need to find out what's the thickness of the washer here. Okay, because the question didn't tell us the thickness, and we need the the grip, and the grip is the total length of the members, right? We have the members of the two members, 14 millimeter each, so we need the thickness of the washer. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a dash 33, okay. So if you look at a dash 33, and then. If you look at uh, the 14R, so it's a metric, right? So this is metric here. You look at 14R, then you go up to this column here, the maximum thickness. So 3.5 millimeter is the thickness of the washer. Okay? Yeah. So basically, we get the washer thickness. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, this generally we maybe we call it T. Okay, so we'll get the washer thickness T equal to 3.5 millimeter. Okay, yeah. So then, 
Okay, the first step information is the, the grip. Okay, the grip. And the grip is L equal to the total uh, the total thickness. So 14 plus 14 plus 3.5, which is 31.5. Okay, that's the grip. So uh, let me go back to the table 8-7. Uh, once we get the grip now, let's see what what else do we need in terms of calculating LT. So we need this guy here, the capital LT. So the basically the length of the threaded portion. Okay, the length of threaded, the total length of threaded portion, LT, capital LT. Okay. So LT is is a metric, so we need to use uh, this formula here. Okay, we need to use this formula. But this formula has three categories, you know, bas basically depends on the total length of L. So you see the L, capital L here is the total length, right? Total length. But in this case, if you can imagine, what's the member? The member is only 31.8. So uh, the total length, you know, your, your bot is going to be less than 125, right? Yeah, you're not going to use a a 200 millimeters of a bot for that much of uh, uh, members. Huh? So basically we're going to use 2D plus 6 millimeter for this L capital T. Okay, Okay. so uh, number one, I'll see the total length, total length L is less than 125 millimeter. Then L capital T, so uh, you should know that the length of uh, of the thread L capital T is 2D plus 6. And the small d at here is the major diameter of the bot. So what's the small d then? Which one? It, sa it tells you M14 times 2. Which number is the major diameter? 14, right? This is a major diameter. What's the 2 again? Pitch. Pitch, yeah. So this is basically 2 times 14 plus 6, which is 28 to 34 millimeter. That's LT. Okay, that's LT. Okay, third information, if I go back to this table here, okay, the third information is uh, we need to figure out what is the proper length for this bot, the capital L, the total length for the bot. Uh, the table says that capital L needs to be greater need, hmm? yeah, needs to be greater than small L plus H, right? Small L plus H. Small L is what's small L again? Grip, right? So we need to figure out what's the H at here. We know L already H. And H is the uh, bot, uh, the, uh, no, H is the, uh, H, if you look at this one here, H refer to this one here. H refer to the head of this uh, nut. Okay? Yeah, the length of the nut, basically. Okay, so, let's go back to the third, and then, uh, the third element that is here. Height of the nut. Okay? Height of the nut, H. So how do I find the information for this then? We use table A-13. Okay, A-13. So uh, the rule of thumb is if your bot is M M14, then your nut should also be M14. Okay, so basically the same size, right? So looking at this M14 size, okay for table A-13, A-31, A-31, A-31 is right here, uh, but we're looking at as a metric, so that's the bottom one here, okay, M13, M M M14 is right here. For M14, which column is the height? This is the height, there are three categories height, so the first one is regular, right? So we just need to use the regular one here. Okay, it's not a jam nut. So M14 give us height H equal to 12.8.
So h equal to 12.8 millimeter. All right, so once we figure out this h now, then uh, the total length of the board, capital L, needs to be greater than L plus h. Okay, L plus h. L is calculated as 31.5, h is 12.8, so this is uh, 43, 40. 44.3 millimeter, right? 44.3 millimeter. Okay. So, uh, 44.3 millimeter. Uh, well, we're not going to use 44.3. Then, what length shall we use then? So, here is basically you use table A 17, okay, for the next nominal size, the length, okay? Uh, I don't think I give you a dash. Is it a here? No. no. Okay, so maybe you can print that out. Um, I'm not sure there's a 45 millimeter or not. Uh, but uh, anyway, so um, in my exercise here, you know, this is not um, very rigid here. So you can use 45 if there's a 45 there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I think in my case I used L equal to 50 millimeter. Okay, it's a little longer than 44. Okay, yeah. So I choose this. Okay, I choose this. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes the question could also be asked this, is this. So the question says, here is the length, L equal to 50 millimeter. Okay, it's given to you. So then you calculate, and you, you figure out this L needs to be greater than 44.3. So then the question, the length, the given by the question, 50 millimeter, it's good, right? It's good. If the question didn't give you the capital L, and you calculate the minimum requirement, then you can choose one based on this A-17 for the next nominal size. Is that good? Do you yeah. always have to check uh, the length? A-17? Oh, you, you, I mean check, the, yes, you do, yes, yes, you do. So if the question give you is, uh, let's say, 45, uh, 40 millimeter total length, right? Then you would say it's not long enough, and then you should recommend using 45. Yeah. So you don't have to give any allowance for thread capacity? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you generally, you do. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, to look it up uh, as, a, as a typical uh, uh, rule of thumb is you leave two or three threads out of this, uh, uh, outside of the nut, okay, yeah, so, okay, but in our calculation, I'm not going to be that picky, okay, you know, if, uh, if the minimum is 44, as long as you don't choose a 70 or 80, you know, uh, right, okay, so, five, so we figure out the capital L now, use the 50, then, now we're ready for calculating L, LT and LD. So if I go back to my table A-7, so here's the calculation for LD is a capital L minus L capital T. And here's a calculation for LT is a small l minus LD. Okay, so this is simply based on the dimension geometry of this, uh, of this graph here. Okay, so nothing tricky. There, so my LD equal to L minus L capital T. So equal to 50 minus 34 equal to 16 millimeter. Okay. And LT equal to small L minus small LD. Okay. So 31.5 minus 16 equal to 15.5 millimeter. So once you have these two numbers now, then you can calculate uh, the stiffness now. Uh, but I guess we also need the area, right? So AD, which is the unthreaded portion area, and that's pi D squared over 4, and it's pi times 14 over 4. So this is 154 millimeter square. AT, now AT you don't need to calculate, okay? AT you don't need to. AT, you can get this AT from table a dash one because this is the metric, uh, so we use table A dash one. So if you look at your A dash one and uh, fourteen, so it's right here. 
uh, tensile stress area AT the third column. So this is what 100 uh, the 115 millimeters square. Okay, so that's your AT. Okay, there. So all the numbers we know now. Uh, the last number is the Young's modular. So this bolt is generous steel and uh, E equal to 207 uh, gigapi. Okay, 207 gigapi. Okay, unit. Okay, often in time you will be wondering about the unit. Uh, rule of thumb, you can convert everything to standard one here, but uh, uh, you can use my uh, my writing in the following. If I, if I don't ch change, I use a millimeter, I use the gigapi, then the KB, the calculated based on uh, these numbers, so 154 AD times 115 AT times E207 and divided by uh, the, the numerator. So uh, no change in terms of units, so basically millimeter, square, and uh, gigapi. The unit that you get based on this calculation is mega newton per meter. Okay, it's so a mega newton per meter. Stiffness unit standard is a newton per meter, right? So the calculated value here is a mega newton per meter. Okay, yeah. So all good. So that's the sti yeah. Oh, oh uh, yes, yes, it's coarse. I guess yeah, I should see that. Yes, uh, but uh, well, let's see, right? Uh, what is that? M fourteen. Yeah, so it's a fourteen by two, right? Fourteen by two. So you can see the pitch for the fine is one and a half. So yes, it's a coarse, right? Even we don't need to see that actually, right? Yeah, because two is for the coarse. That makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. To be more specific, I should I can s you know it can be said there. Okay. So that's the stiffness of the bolt now. Now let's look at the next one. Member stiffness. Okay. So this one is generally a, a more challenging part than the bolt stiffness. So what's member stiffness? Um, let's see. What we're looking at is basically it's this guy right here. Um, anyway, maybe. maybe I'll just uh, take a drawing. Okay, so here's the member stiffness we're talking about here. Okay. So the tricky part for member stiffness, right, is that uh, the compression, okay, on the member, it's a spread it spreads out between the bolt head this this from here to the nut okay so the compression spreads out from here to here okay uh, and it's this, the the area is not a uniform so it's not uh, basically the compression area is uniform from here to here so people did experiments and, uh, and what they find is okay uh, they find they can better approximate that uh, uh, the compression area using this so-called uh, pressure cone okay so basically, uh, between the bolt head and the nut, the pressure it's a distribution is a symmetric cone. Okay, it's a symmetric cone. Okay, the keyword is symmetric. Okay. So based on this cone, we will be able to calculate the stiffness. Okay. Yeah. So the cone has an alpha angle. So this alpha angle here, as we're gonna see that it takes. Uh, as a as a 30 degree, okay, as a 30 degree at right here. So how do we calculate this uh, uh, this pressure, uh, this stiffness based on the pressure cone then? And the second of all, uh, the pressure cone also has started, okay, basically right underneath that washer 
face, okay, right underneath that washer face. And the, this initial width, okay, right here, so this initial width here is we call that a D. Hmm? The initial width here is we call a DW, small DW here, okay, small DW, okay. Again, this is the major diameter, okay, of the bolt, okay. So, the DW is related to the major diameter of the bolt by 1.5 times D, okay. So, 1.5 times D, okay. So you need to remember this one here, okay? So if you, this one is not right, then it's, it's not going to be right, okay? So then uh, within this pressure cone, okay? Within the pressure cone, so what you can think is, you can think there is a series of this kind of uh, frustum, okay? Series of frustum, okay, within the pressure cone. Why, why do I call it series of frustum? Because maybe there's a portion of material of steel over here. And then there is a portion of material from here to here is a cast iron, for example, right? And maybe there's a change in other material. So you consider, you know, basically different materials, right, as a different frustum. Okay? The stiffness then is basically it's a connection of the series of these frustums here. So how many frustum we have? It depends on basically the distribution or the thickness of each frustum at here. Okay, but a general formula for calculating one f the stiffness of one frustum is this. So general formula of K for one frustum. Okay, is this? It's based on basically what what you can think of is uh, it you can take out one sort of like a trapezoidal shape for that uh, uh, frustum. Say for example, right? Let's say this the washer has a, a it's a steel, and then the second one here is a cast iron. So you look at that uh, basically, what do you get? You get an intersection of the material with the cone. So the intersection material of the cone is basically it's what? It's this portion here, right? That's a trapezoidal. Okay? So the intersection of material with the cone is always a trapezoid. Okay? It's always a trapezoid. So I'll use the trapezoid at here. So here's a trapezoid, okay, intersected between the material and the cone. And then the, the trapezoid has an uh, upper length of D, okay? Okay, and it has a thickness of T, okay? So, how do we figure out the D and the T is purely based on the given question, right? So, this is a geometry, basically, okay? I'll show you uh, some examples later, okay? And the nut and the bolt go through right over here. So, and this is the major diameter D, right? The major diameter D. And here is angle alpha, okay, of the pressure cone, okay. So that's it. Then we are able to calculate the stiffness of this one frustum or this one trapezoid. So the formula for this is. Uh, K equal to 0 0.577, okay, uh, well, uh, maybe, uh, just, yeah, maybe I'll give you the, the initial one here, pi E D tangential alpha over ln, okay, a numerator over denominator, and the numerator is 2T tan alpha plus capital D minus small d, capital D plus small d. The denominator is 2t tan alpha plus d plus small d 
plus multiplied by capital D minus small d. Okay, so this is the general formula for calculating the thrust, the stiffness of one thrust. Alpha is 30 degree. If I plug in 30 degree over here, so this formula K, okay, can be you can directly use this one. So 0 0.577 pi e d and over ln okay 1.155 t plus capital D minus small d capital D this okay. Okay, so that's your stiffness. Okay, that's a stiffness. Is that good? Okay. So now I'm gonna make use this formula now. Okay. Make use. Remember the definition. Now, okay. The capital D is the upper. It's basically capital D is a is the it's a narrow mm -hmm. side of this trapezoid. Okay. The smaller length of the trapezoid. Uh, because the reason is when you go go to the bottom here, the trapezoid becomes upside down, right? And then if you want to use this formula, remember that D is always the smaller side. Okay? Yeah. So let's look at an example here. Okay, we might not be able to finish the example, and uh, but we'll look at this uh, this one here. Okay? Yeah. I'll I'll give you a more generic uh, type of uh, uh, case study here. So let's say I have two members. Okay, it doesn't matter how many members. Okay, so the idea applies the same thing. If uh, uh, if the board is clamping two members. First step, you draw the two members with the proper uh, thickness for the two members. Let's say this is uh, L1. And this is L2. Okay? Yeah. Then the next thing what you do is you draw the pressure cone. Okay? So let's say, remember where you draw? You start from the washer face. You start from the washer face of the nut of the bolt. So you have a washer face over here. Okay. So you started to draw from the washer face, and you draw it right, a symmetric cone. Okay, and then up to the other end. Okay, draw a symmetric one. Okay. Yeah. So the initial width of the pressure cone, if you remember. How much is that again? DW. Okay? It's DW. It's 1.5D. Okay? So same thing for the other side is also 1.5D because it's symmetric. Okay, so once you draw this symmetric one now, then you need to figure out where this center line is, because that's somehow you need the, the information here. Okay? So then you look at this one here. Now the next question you ask is how many thrust terms? Or how many thrusts do we have for this particular uh, case here? Let's say this is a cast iron and this is steel, okay? Two different kind of material, okay? If it's a two different material, how many thrusts do we have? Two. Just two? Three. three, right? So where are the three here? One, one trapezoid here and one over here, right? What's the next one? Okay, the last one's here. So, three trapezoids, right? Why why are we separating three? Because each trapezoid represents one particular type of material. And each trapezoid is on a different shape. Okay? Does that make sense? That's the three frustum you have here. So if I ask you this question here, what if the two members are the same material? How many frustum do you have? Two. two. Actually two, but you don't you don't need to calculate the two stiffness. You only need to calculate what? One, One right? And the two stiffness are the same and then you're connecting series. So in, but in this case, you need to calculate three because why? Materials are different, the shape of the trapezoid are different. And then we need to calculate three different stiffnesses. Okay? I'll use that formula to finish the calculation in the next lecture. Okay? Yeah.
Any questions?